You're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I invite you here. here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. I am here. Here I am to say that Fear you're my God. You're all together. Because you're perfect. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I invite you here. here I am to worship. Good morning, Crenshaw family. Morning. To our visitors, you are honored guests. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. And before we get started, I'll ask if we can do a little housekeeping. I'm expecting a full house this morning. So if you sat in the middle of the seat, in the middle of the row, you might be asked to scoot all the way over to your left or all the way to your right. I might need your Bible and your jacket to sit in your lap. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. How's everyone doing? The world might come together today to celebrate what they call Easter. And if they want to choose today to do it, I say it's about time they give uh, honor and glory and, and, and attention to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join us next Sunday as well as we will celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As I once again, I look out into this audience, I can see God's goodness, his grace, and his mercy. He has kept you. He has allowed you to return back to this building. And for that, we are grateful. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, once again, we say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your patience and your understanding with us. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on Calvary's cross. Father, as we come into this building to give you the praise and worship you so richly deserve, we ask that we can focus on you and you alone. Father, we ask that you please put a hedge of protection around our building and keep us safe. Father, we thank you for everyone that is here and those that are to come. Forgive us of our sins. It's in Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Please lift your voice and sing with me. Victory is mine. Oh, victory is mine. I know that victory today is mine. Oh, my. And I told Satan to get thee behind because victory Today is mine, joy is mine, joy is mine, I know that joy is mine, I know that joy today is mine, oh my, and I told Satan, told him to get thee behind, because joy, joy today. Is mine. Love is mine. Love is mine. I know that love, love is mine. I know that love, love today is mine. Oh my! And I told Satan, told him to get thee behind because love today is mine. Say victory is mine, victory 
is mine. I know that a victory is mine. Oh Lord, victory today is mine. Oh mine. And I told Satan, told him to get because victory today is mine. Lord, I hold my hand, my hand while I run this race. Oh Lord, Lord, hold my hand, my hand while I run this race. Oh Lord, Lord, hold my hand, my hand while, while I run this race because I don't, I don't want to run this race in vain. This race in, Lord, hold my hand, Lord, hold my hand, my hand, oh, while, while I run this race, oh, Lord, Lord, hold my hand, oh, while I run this race, oh, Lord, Lord, hold my hand, my hand, while I run this race, because I don't, don't this race in the this race in God, my feet, Lord, Lord, God, my, my feet, oh, while, while I run this race, oh, Lord, Lord, God, my feet, oh, while I run this race, oh, Lord, Lord, God, my feet, my feet, oh, while, while I run this race because I don't want, don't want to run this race in the van, this race me. Help me to live right, Lord. Help me to live right, live right a while. While I run this race, oh Lord, Lord. Help me to live right while I run this race, oh Lord, Lord. Help me to live right while I run this race because I don't want, I don't want to run this race in vain, this race in Oh Lord, Lord, help me to love right, love right while I run this race. Oh Lord, Lord, help me to love right, love right while. While I run this race, oh Lord, Lord, help me to live right, love right a while. While I run this race, because I don't want to run this race, I don't want to run this race, Lord, I don't want, don't want to run this race in vain, this race in vain. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. Oh, I love to praise His holy name. I love to praise Him, say. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. Oh, I love to praise Holy name, for he's my rock, he's my rock, my rock, my rock, my sword and shield, and don't you know Jesus is, is a will in the hole of a wheel, and I know that never, I know he'll never, never, never let me down, He's just a Jew, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Oh, we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hey. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, I love to praise his name. Oh, I My rock, my rock, my sword and shield, and don't you know Jesus is, is the will in the middle of a wheel, and I know that he'll never, I know he'll never, never, never let me down. He's just a jewel. Oh Lord, that I oh, oh we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. Oh, we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. say I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise in the morning. I love, I love in the noon day. I love. just want to thank you, Lord. We come to thank, thank you, thank you, Lord. Well, I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, we thank, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, we thank, thank you, we thank you, oh, we thank you, Lord, we thank, we thank you, we thank you, oh. Thank you, thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been, you've been so, you've been so. Oh Lord, you've been so good, Lord. You've been, been so, so. Oh Lord, you've been so good. You've been. You've been so, you've been so, so good. Well, I, I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord, for working it out. You were, you were it, you were it. Oh, Lord, with Without a doubt, Lord, you were, you worked it, worked it. Oh, Lord, you worked it out, Lord, you were, you worked it, you worked it. Oh, well, I just want to thank you. 
you, Lord. You're making a way you made. You made. You made a way. Oh, Lord, you made a way, Lord. You made. You made a. Made a. Oh, Lord, you made a way, Lord. You made. You made a way. You made a way. Oh. Just wanna, oh Lord, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna thank you, thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Can we all stand together, please? I have the privilege of reading our scripture this morning. And we'll begin our reading in John chapter 19. In verse 38. Then we'll conclude at John chapter 20. Through verse 10. And the scriptures read, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a great garden, and the garden, a tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they lay Jesus because of the Jews preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus had loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciples and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciples outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head now lying with the linen clothes but folding together in the place by itself then the other disciple who came to the temple first to the tomb first went in also and he saw and believed for as yet they did not know the scripture that he might raise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. It is written. Good morning, church. Good morning. This time, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We just want to say thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes we don't know what to say 
or how to give you thanks. There's no words that we can say. And so we just appreciate you so much and we say thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the ultimate sacrifice that was made, dear Lord. But we thank you for your resurrection. Heavenly Father, we come to you today as a church community, dear Lord, as one body, as a family. We ask that you just be with us, dear Heavenly Father, each and every day as we try to do your will and serve you. Heavenly Father, we ask a prayer that you be with our marriages and strengthen them, dear Lord. We ask a prayer that you be with our children. Comfort them, dear Lord. Continue to support them. We ask that you be with our members, dear Heavenly Father. Be with our leadership, dear Lord. Continue to, to bless them and keep us all safe. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray, dear Lord, that this worship service will be pleasing in your sight. Help us not to hold back our praise, dear Lord, because we just have so much to say thank you for. Dear Heavenly Father, when we leave this place today, dear Lord, I ask that you just continue to put a light in our hearts, dear Lord, and in our minds, dear Heavenly Father, that we could be an example. Dear Heavenly Father, if there's anything that has been omitted, you already know what it is, and you've taken care of it, dear Lord, and you've answered it accordingly. Be with those who are grieving. Be with those who are struggling, dear Heavenly Father. Be with those who need support. Be with those who feel like they might be alone. We just know that we're never alone, dear Heavenly Father. We always have you. Continue to protect us and love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you.
morning and started me on my way. Oh, Lord, all you done, let me say, thank you for giving your son. Thy light to guide me day 
see Jesus hold my hand. Can we say amen this morning? Can we say praise the Lord this morning? God is good. Yes, sir. At this time, we're going to ask all the children to get prepared for children church, and you may go ahead and exit at this time, and we're going to have Navashua. Got one more good one for us. We're going to have him give us one more song as we dismiss. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, that you bless me, Lord, Lord, that I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know that I'll be satisfied. Oh, see, no, anyway. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, know that I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, know that I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, that you bless me, Lord, know that I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know. I'll be satisfied. Oh, said amazing, amazing grace. How sweet, how sweet the sound, y'all. That saved, that saved a wretch like me. Oh, Lord, you know that I was, I was, was lost. But now, thank God, I found it. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know that I'll be satisfied. I'm gonna trust in no anyway. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, know that I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, know that I'll be satisfied. Come Lord, anyway, anyway, that you bless me, Lord, know that I. I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway that you bless me, Lord, you know that I'll be satisfied. My favorite verse right here. Oh, said I came, I came to Jesus just as, just as I was, y'all. I was weary, weary and wounded and sad. Oh, Lord, you know that I found, I found in Him. My rest in place, y'all. Anyway, 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 you bless me, Lord. You know that I'll I'll be again. Satisfied. Oh, Lord, said I came, anyway, I came to Jesus anyway, just as anyway, just as I was. Anyway, I was weary, anyway, weary and wounded, anyway, and sad. Anyway, oh, Lord, anyway, you know that I found, I found in Him. Anyway, my Place, y'all. Anyway, 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 you bless, bless me, me, Lord. You know that I'll be satisfied. Come on, trust me, no, anyway. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. Know that I'll be satisfied. Come on, anyway, anyway, you bless me, me Lord. God for Jesus Christ and praise the Lord uh, for his mercy endures uh, forever. Uh, good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, and if you're happy to be alive, you ought to tell your face. Amen. 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 You can at least smile at me. Amen. 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 I uh, want to welcome all of you uh, to our services. If this is your first time here, may God bless you. Thank you for coming. Uh, if it's been a long time since you've been here, it's good to see you again. Uh, we welcome you to our services. A little bit has changed since the last time you've been here, maybe. Uh, amen. But uh, we make room, so we'll scoot over. Amen. And let you sit on down. Uh, and we hope that you will uh, participate in our celebration 
of God. Uh, I want to uh, invite your attention to the 19th chapter of John, as was read uh, in your hearing. Y'all don't mind standing one more time for me while we read it. God bless you. Uh, we pick up the story here in chapter 19 and verse number 38. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Uh, Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen clothes, cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen cloths but folded together in a place by itself then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and he saw and believe for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead then the disciples went away again to their own homes is that in your bible god bless you you may be seated in the presence of the lord we uh, typically uh, focus on uh, the facts of the gospel and we have made them very uh, easy to remember According to First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, uh, we know that Jesus came uh, and died on the cross as an atoning sacrifice, meaning he paid the price or the penalty that sinners would pay so that their sins can be uh, 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 remitted uh, by God and we focus a lot on the crucifixion uh, and the pain and agony that Jesus suffered and then according to the scriptures he was buried and then we know that on the third day he rose again and today is the day amen that the world stops and recognizes uh, that Jesus got up from the grave. Now, I'm an old school Church of Christ guy, and y'all know us in the Church of Christ, we downplay all holidays. Amen. Uh, we act like Christmas don't exist and Easter don't exist because y'all know what we say. We celebrate the resurrection every Sunday uh, as if it don't matter or as if we do it so much we know better not to take the day out and say it's special. But for those of you who are Christmas and Easter only, for those of you who are Christmas Mother's Day and Easter, we just glad that you stop at least one time a year and acknowledge that Jesus got up from the grave. So we'll take it. Amen. We'll take it. Uh, we focus on his resurrection, but very little time is spent on the actual burial. And this morning, I want to talk to you why uh, about why the burial is so crucial to God's plan of salvation. Do y'all believe in God's plan of salvation? 
Now, I want y'all to get it. Don't get it twisted. I know many of us grew up believing that the plan of salvation was that you hear the word, believe the word, repent of your sins, confess that Jesus is the Christ, son of God, and you're buried for the remission of your sin. But I want you to know that's not God's plan of salvation. That's man's response to God's plan of salvation. Oh, a Church of Christ member should have said amen right there. What do you mean, Brother Tyson? Well, hearing is what you do after God already initiated his plan. Y'all missed that. That was an opportunity for you to share. I said, God's plan of salvation is the fact that humanity was dead in their sin, lost and couldn't save themselves. He got up off the throne, put on the woes of the flesh, lived a sinless life, died on the cross of Calvary to remit your sins, to save your sorry self. Amen. For by grace, we have been saved through faith. Amen. And because he got up from the grave and defeated death, hell in the grave, we respond after we have heard with faith. Oh, y'all missed that. That's hearing and believing. And then based on the fact that Jesus has done all that, we repent of our sins and confess that he's... So I want you to understand, we preach, amen, that God's plan of salvation is that humanity needed to be saved from itself, and God did the job. Y'all got that? I just want to make sure we're on the same page before we move forward. Now, what, what typically happens is we don't pay much attention uh, to the burial part because we're so quick to talk about how Jesus suffered, and then we talk about the victory. Uh, that we have in his resurrection. But this morning, just for a few quick, quick minutes, I want to talk to you about the resurrection. Y'all got that? By the time we reach John chapter 19, by the time we reach John chapter 19, uh, Jesus' crucifixion is well underway. He is brought before Pilate because uh, the Jewish leaders, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the scribes, uh, and the lawmakers were upset that Jesus was uh, basically speaking against and acting as though he did not care about their religious law requirements. And so that made them enemies of Jesus. They were his opponents. They they seem to stand off against him in the Gospel of John. They don't like the fact that Jesus seems to play willy-nilly with the law of God. They're strict law abiders. And when Jesus comes along and does things uh, uh, like healing on the Sabbath and does things like, uh, you know, uh, 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 reinterpreting uh, or really for them, really teaching them the, the real meaning of the law, they get their sensibilities upset and they don't like that. And I want you to know when Lazarus is raised from the dead, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. When Lazarus is raised from the dead, uh, one of the problems that they have is that they know that if Jesus started raising people from the dead, he really going to get all the people on his side. And so in John chapter 11, when he raises Lazarus, they actually say, it's time for this man to die because it's better that one man die, amen, than all of us get in trouble by having this upheaval against the Roman Empire. So what they do is they concoct a story that Jesus is a rebel and that Jesus is a threat to the Roman Empire, which means that they have to convince Pilate, the Roman governor, to actually have Jesus executed. Uh, now, now the Jewish people uh, in the ancient Near East had no power to crucify. They didn't have any governmental power. Uh, they might have had religious temple power and influence, but they didn't have it with the government, and they could not crucify anybody or have anybody crucified. So what the Jews had to do was they had to convince the Roman governor that Jesus was a threat against the Roman Empire and if he's a threat against the Roman Empire then it would be better that he be executed uh, as a criminal than you let him live. So they convinced Pilate uh, that Jesus was a rebel rouser and that Jesus was a threat to the Roman Empire. Now I want you to understand that's important for us to know because based on how uh, they set Jesus up and how they present him to Pilate, Pilate kind looks at the situation and wants to wash his hands of it. Y'all ever heard that ex expression, I wash my hands of it? Pilate knows that they didn't trumped up charges and Jesus ain't guilty. Y'all know that, right? As a matter of fact, they bring Jesus to Pilate and all these accusations are being hurled against Jesus and Jesus ain't got too much to say. Y'all remember that? And Pilate asked him, hey man, ain't you got something to say? Uh, all these things they're witnessing against you and saying about you, speak up for yourself. Why don't you say something about what they're saying? And Jesus basically said, I ain't got nothing to say. And Pilate said, man, don't you know I have the authority to have you crucified? And then Jesus speaks up. He said, look, homeboy, you don't have any authority unless my father gives it to you. Even though you sit in the governor's seat, you really ain't about that. Uh, the only way you can do what you do is if my father allows it. 
Okay, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So the Bible says that uh, that 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 Pilate basically willing to content the people and uh, did not uh, want to see the people riot, uh, basically sentenced Jesus to death on the cross. Now, I don't mean to upset your sensibilities because I know typically we picture uh, two thieves on either side of Jesus on the cross. But I want you to know Jesus was not crucified as a thief. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, the word for thief in, in, in the Greek New Testament is kleptis. That's where we get our word klepto from. Y'all know what a kleptomaniac? Okay, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. A person who likes to steal. That's a klep Okay, okay. person likes to steal. Well, Jesus technically wasn't sitting between. He wasn't hanging between two thieves. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the Greek uh, New Testament, uh, the word thief is kleptis, and it means somebody who steals by stealth. Y'all know what a cat burglar is? Break in your house while you sleep and take your stuff? They don't want to be caught. You know, the person who waits for you to leave your house and then sneaks up and, and steals your stuff, that's, that they steal by stealth. Now, a robber is somebody who does strong arm robbery. Okay, y'all looking at me funny. You know you got a cousin locked up for strong arm robbery because he walked into a 7-Eleven with, with a 38 special and tried to hit the register. Y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I know y'all in church, but you folk ain't used to coming to church. We keeps it 100 and real around here. So when the sermon makes sense, you ought to say amen. Now, now a robber is one who will put a gun to your head and say, break yourself, fool. And they take your, your stuff from you. Amen. So there's a difference between a thief and a robber. But I want you to know the scriptures call these two people thieves, but they're not thieves. The, the word that's really used is insurrectionists, meaning they were political prisoners who had posed a threat to Roman Empire. Jesus was in between two insurrectionists. That's the reason why they trade Barabbas' life for Jesus. Guess who they let go? Mark 15 teaches us that they want Jesus to take the place of Barabbas. Barabbas committed murder in the uprising or insurrection. They freed Barabbas, who was a murderer, and sentenced Jesus when he was scourged to be crucified. Y'all got that? Okay, so Jesus is now sentenced, and the whipping begins. They played a crown of thorns. They put it about his head. They, they treat him like a king. Now, now really what's happening is the Romans don't know nothing about Jesus being a king. That's a Jewish problem. They don't like the fact that Jesus says, I am the king. I am of God. I am the one. And so what they're doing when they, when they mock him is they're teasing him. So they put a crown of thorns on his head because they say, oh, if you're a king, you must wear a crown. So they put a crown of thorns. You throw, if you, if, if you put, if you twist some thorns up and wear it as a hat, y'all know what that means, right? Okay, y'all looking at me for have you ever put on a hat? Your hair is long and you go snatch it off real quick and quick and one of your naps get caught in the hat. Okay, y'all ain't never had that happen to you. And it pulls and you'd be like, whoo. Uh, okay, okay. Now, you know, if that hurts, how much it would hurt if you had thorns placed down. Okay, okay, okay. I need to talk to the Christian folk, right? Where, where my amen corner at? Amen. I'm just trying to share with you the story. Uh, 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 so they, they put a purple robe on him because they're teasing him. He thinks he's the king. They put a scepter in his hand. Why? Because they're teasing him. He said he's the king. Then Pilate writes uh, on the cross above Jesus. Jesus, king of the Jews. And the Jews are upset at that. And John, they say, don't put he's the king of the Jews. Put he said he's the king of the Jews because they want him dead because he said he was the king of the Jews. Pilate said, I've written what I've written. You know why? Because even Pilate knows somewhere down the line, this is the king. Oh, y'all missed that. All right. So Jesus dies on the cross. And so he dies on a Friday afternoon. The scripture teaches us that's the preparation day. Preparation day for what, Brother Tyson? Well, it's the day before the Sabbath. And so because it's the day before the Sabbath, uh, Jews don't want the bodies hanging on the cross. So they want to take the bodies down and they want to bury them or, or deal with their remains before the Sabbath begins. Now, one of the problems that you have with insurrectionists being uh, crucified or executed by the Roman government, the Roman government don't care nothing about social customs, religious customs. They don't care nothing. And since you're insurrectionists, they're not going to bury you with dignity. So the Roman custom is you pull the criminal down off of the cross and you throw his body in the ditch and you let the buzzards have at him. Okay, y'all didn't know that. Yeah, that, cause they're not, they're not trying. You know, even, even now, if you die in jail, they call your next of kin. 
and the next of kin determines what they do with your remains. The Roman government don't care nothing about your next of kin. They were just going to throw Jesus' body out and let the buzzards have way. But oh, Lord have mercy, Joseph of Arimathea shows up and he pleads with Pilate to get permission to take the body of Jesus. Now that's important. Why is it important? Because we know the scriptures teach us that he got to be buried. Oh, y'all missing this. Why does he have to be buried, Brother Tyson? Because burial is crucial to the resurrection. He got to be buried. You only bury what? Dead things. You don't bury people who are alive. So it's important for, for it to be established that Jesus went down into the grave. So Joseph of Arimathea shows up. I'm preaching now. Y'all don't even know it. I'm not setting it up. I'm in the middle of my sermon right now. Y'all don't even know it. Uh, 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 Joseph of Arimathea shows up. And the Bible says he was a disciple of Jesus, but he was a secret disciple. Now, at 7 o'clock, I didn't have time to walk the floor about what it means to be a secret disciple of Jesus. But if I just drop this on you while I'm flying by, I, I want to encourage you. Don't be following Jesus from a distance. Oh, y'all, y'all, don't, don't be stealth-like with your commitment to the Lord. Don't, don't act like you a cat burglar Christian who only show up when you need something. I wish I had a church. Uh, don't be the kind of person that only need God when the chips are down and when you down and out. Don't, don't be following Jesus from a distance. We looking for some folk that's going to walk with him and talk with him and ride with him and, 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 and let him be there for you when time get tough. Celebrate him because he good. Not just because your life is good, but because God is good. Do I have a witness? But Joseph of Arimathea is afraid. You know why he's afraid? Because he got a little bit of power in the Sanhedrin, and he's a rich guy. I'm going to explain that to you here in a second. He's a rich guy. He don't want the Jews talking about him. Because you know what happens when you step out on a limb and you do something ain't nobody else willing to do? They talk about you for being different. People leave you alone when you look like them. Oh, you missed what I said. I said, people will leave you alone if you go along with the crowd. But just as soon as you do something different, then all of a sudden you public enemy number one. Okay, okay. So he was afraid. He was afraid. So he and his buddy Nicodemus show up. And John introduces us to Nicodemus way back in John chapter 3. Y'all remember when Jesus said, for God so loved the world. Okay, okay. That was, he was talking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus is another member of the Sanhedrin. Uh, he also is close to the kingdom, but won't, won't submit to it. Uh, we don't see a picture of him and Joseph of Arimathea actually becoming true disciples of Jesus. But they do show up when Jesus is at his most vulnerable. And they show up with spices. The scripture says, they show up with about 100 pounds. Now, uh, that's pounds to us would be about 75 pounds. Whatever it is, it's a lot of spices. New King James calls it myrrh and aloe because they want to treat Jesus' body properly. They want to bury him and prepare him for burial. So Joseph of Arimathea has some money. How do we know Tyson? Because he owns the cave where Jesus is going to be buried. Matter of fact, he must have just purchased it newly because ain't nobody else yet buried in it. Y'all see how the scripture says, wasn't nobody in the cave? Jesus was the first person in the cave. All right, so Jesus is going to be buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And, and it's because Jesus himself don't have a family plot. Okay, y'all miss what I said. I said he don't have a family plot. So he's got to depend on Joseph of Arimathea to come and offer up his family plot. And so Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate and asks permission to take the body. And so Pilate is sympathetic uh, to Jesus because he knows that Jesus ain't did nothing wrong. So he allows Joseph of Arimathea to take control of Jesus' remains. The scriptures teach us that they prepared Jesus' body for burial. And the Jewish custom, because they don't embalm, was to rub the body down in spices and alloys and smell goods. And then you take linen cloth and you do the same thing to the linen cloth. And then you wrap the body up in the linen cloth. Y'all got that? Now, the reason why that's important is because the spices and the alloys, uh, they, pre they prevent immediate decay. You, you got to fight against the stench, y'all. They're not going to embalm. You know the reason why granny can sit up at the rest home for two and a half weeks until everybody fly in from Alabama, everybody fly in from Mississippi? You know the reason why she can do that? Because they embalm her. Amen. But the Jews don't practice embalming. That's something the Egyptians did. Uh, that's the reason why when your Jewish or your Muslim friend die, they put them in the ground the next day. Oh, y'all miss what I said. I said, if you got a, a true Jewish friend, he died on a Tuesday, he in the ground by Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, but Jen and I had a family friend, a Jewish guy came to our wedding, come to find out Charlie died on Monday. I called the family, asked when the funeral was. They said, boy, you missed it. 
I said, well, I said, what you mean? Well, we buried Charlie a couple of three days ago. I said, he ain't been dead a week. That's because Jews don't play around. They don't embalm. They put you right in the ground. So, so what happens is they got to get Jesus in the tomb because it's Friday and they don't want the Sabbath to be ruined with these dead bodies up. So they got to get him in the grave. And so Friday afternoon, Friday evening after Jesus dies, they come and they prepare his body. Y'all got that? Now, in the preparation of the body. They wrap you in linen cloths that have been soaked in the myrrh and aloe. They wipe your body down with the myrrh and aloe. They bind your hands and your feet, and then they put a face cloth over your face to cover your face. They bind your hand and feet, and they wrap you in the linen. Y'all got that? Okay, just say yes, Tyson. We got that even if you missed it. Okay, I'm trying to make sure y'all still on the line. Okay, uh, and so what they do is they bury you. So we find out uh, when Lazarus dies. Y'all remember his friend Lazarus that he raised from the grave? In chapter 11, when, when, when Jesus comes up on Lazarus's grave, y'all remember what he does? He tells Lazarus, come forth. Y'all remember that? And the Bible says, look, can we read that just for a second? If you got your Bible, can you just turn to the left to John chapter 11? Look at John chapter 11. We're going to look at verse number 43. It says, now when he, Jesus, said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died, speaking of Lazarus, came out, look at this, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. So I want you to watch this. When they bury you, Face covering, linen grave clothes, bind your hands and feet, put you in the cave. Y'all got that? So that's how Jesus is going to be buried. Y'all got that? They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna go into Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna take Jesus' body. They're going to rub him down in the spices and the alloys. They're going to take the linen. They're going to do the same thing to the linen. They're going to wrap his body up. They're going to bind his hands and his feet, and they're going to cover his face. Y'all got that? Okay. Early Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene shows up. Now, for those of you who remember your Sunday school lessons in the gospel, Mary ain't the only woman that shows up at the grave site because they're going to go finish the burial process. But John only mentioned one woman. Now, I don't know why John only mentions one woman, but he mentions one woman, and that woman is Mary Magdalene. Anybody know anything about Mary Magdalene? Mary Magdalene was the woman whom Jesus cast out seven demons. Y'all missed what I said. Mary Magdalene had issues that need tissues. And Jesus, okay, Mary Magdalene was 5150. Okay, that's the police code for crazy. Y'all missing it. Okay, uh, Mary Magdalene needed one of them jackets to make you hug yourself. Y'all got it now? And Jesus delivered her from seven, not one demon. Lord have mercy. I know a whole lot of people with one. I couldn't imagine dealing with a sister with seven. And Jesus, cleansed. okay, okay, I thought it was a shouting moment for somebody who plagued with a demon. Because if Jesus can heal the woman from seven, I know he can help you deal with your one. <laughs> Trying to insert the amens in the sermon and y'all ain't saying nothing. All right, all right, she shows up to the tomb. Bible says she looked and she sees that the, the rock has been rolled away. Now we got to understand when, 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 when they bury you, they roll a rock in front of the tomb and typically the Roman government will seal it to make sure nobody messes with the body. So when she gets there early on Sunday morning, the rock has been rolled away. She don't go in. She don't even look in. She run and go tell Peter, and the disciple whom Jesus loved. Y'all got that? So she runs to him and she says, listen, the rock was rolled away and uh, I think they stole the body of Jesus because they take it away and I don't know where he is. And so Peter and John take off running back to the tomb. And the Bible says that the disciple whom Jesus loved outran Peter. Now, in case you don't know this, in the Gospel of John, it was written by John. But John don't refer to himself as John, nor does he write in the first person. So John doesn't say, I saw this and I saw that. He calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, that's a pretty good title, amen. If you don't want to use your own name, y'all missing this. Can you imagine introducing yourself? My name is not Tyson. I'm just the disciple. Whom Jesus loved. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. So, so it, John is talking about he outran Peter to the tomb. But when John walks up on the tomb, he don't go in. He just looks. The scripture says he sees the linen cloths lying there. But he don't go all the way in. 
Peter then, I guess Peter was my size, and by the time he ran up on her, he was probably huffing. <sighs> Amen when you can. He come up on the tomb. Peter actually goes in. And Peter sees something very interesting. Now, can we read this together? I don't know how many times you've read this and read past it. Look at John chapter 20 and verse number Four. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first and he stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloths lying there yet he did not go in. So that's John the disciple whom Jesus loved. Verse 6 says then Simon Peter came finally uh, following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Now, don't that sound like a whole lot of detail? Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, uh, my children, uh, y'all know we, you know, we eat a lot, uh, and we don't make no bones about it. You know, you come to my house, we're going to feed you good, okay? Uh, and I didn't taught my son how to cook, so y'all know it's over, all right? We just going to, my grandkids going to be all right. I know they're going to be all right. But one of the things I try to teach my children is that, you know, every now and again, you need to go to a nice restaurant, Dr. Crow, because you need to know what elegance and class is. Now, sisters, can I just drop this on you while I'm flying by? Make, make him take you to a restaurant where you don't look up at the menu, you look down, okay. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with a little drive through It ain't nothing wrong. Every now and again, you got to go to a drive through But make sure you, you, you go to a restaurant where you look down at the menu, not up at it. And make sure you go to a restaurant that had cloth napkin. I ain't talking about paper napkin. I'm talking about cloth napkin. We're talking about a nice restaurant. So every, every once a year, once a year, I can't afford it because y'all see how big my kids are. But every now and again, we go to a really nice, because I want to teach them class. So you go to one of the restaurants where you got one person serve the water. You got another person that just wiped the bread crumbs off of the tablecloth. I'm talking fancy. Then you got the waiter. And have you ever noticed the waiter come? They so good. They don't even write nothing down. What will you be having? Everything's a la carte. Ain't no meals. You don't buy no meals. You buy everything a la carte. Y'all know what that is? That means you order your meat, then you order your size. It ain't coming on the same plate. Y'all got that? So I take it to nice places. So uh, we go to nice places because I, I want them. But I, I didn't realize, because see, I didn't grow up doing this. I grew up on, uh, don't get me started about what I grew up on. My kids get depressed when I start talking about my childhood. Um, they, they tell me, Daddy, you win the pain and suffering Olympics. You won. You want because my kids don't know nothing about pain and suffering. So I, I'm gonna leave that part of the story out But I I didn't even notice you, you know that when you when you go to a fancy restaurant There's signals that you give to the wait staff That determines whether or not you finish eating I didn't know this so if you sit there and you take your knife and your fork and you cross them across your plate That means you're finished Okay, if you don't notice, you sitting there, you might have food on your plate. But if you cross your fork and your knife, you telling the waiter, come get your plate, you're done. Now, if you've ever done that and the waiter come and they get ready, you be like, no, I still got, I stink on my plate. Don't be taking my plate. You didn't send the wrong message. If you set it, uh, your fork and your knife in a different position, it means, no, I'm still eating. Sometimes it means I'm taking a rest. Y'all know how it go. Sometimes it means I need some water. I, it's, it's a lot of signal. I didn't, because I didn't grow up like that. I didn't know this. I had to learn proper manners, I'm trying to teach them to my kids, and I don't even know them, right? Uh, uh, so there's proper manners. Now, you may say, well, Brother Tyson, what in the world does that have to do with Jesus? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Uh, the reason why is because I don't know if you noticed the position of the linen cloths and the handkerchief. So the Bible says the linen cloths have simply been discarded and they're laying on the ground. But the handkerchief is folded neatly and it is lying in a proper place. Now, Jewish custom, when a person was eating, the master of the table would wipe his mouth and beard when he was done, he would wipe his face and simply throw his napkin on the table or on the plate. And that signaled the servant that I'm finished eating. And the servant will come 
and he would clear the table. If the master got up and, and the, the servant saw that the napkin was sitting there crumpled up, he knew, master's done. I need to clear the table. But if the master folded the napkin real neatly and set it intentionally down, it meant I ain't done. And he could go to the bathroom, he could go answer the door, he, he, he could go watch TV. It, it means I'm, I'm coming back. I don't know if y'all picked up on this, but he was done with them grave clothes. Why? Because he had defeated death, hell, and the grave. But he left us a clue. He left us a clue with the handkerchief because he folded neatly and left it in place. It meant I ain't finished yet. And I stopped by to let you know that disciples of Christ, we don't worship first day of the week because we scared of Jesus. We don't worship first day of the week because just because we have to worship Jesus. We don't worship first day of the week. Walk first day of the week. Study so our self approve first day of the week because Jesus had left. We do it because he's coming back. Because he ain't finished yet. And we want you to be in that number because he's coming back. And if you truly believe that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, you ought not wait another second. You ought to give your life to God by obeying the scriptures, obeying the gospel, be buried with him for the remission of sin and add it to the body of Christ, the church of Christ. You ought not wait another second. You ought to give your life to him. Not just because it's resurrection Sunday, but because God gave you a day that was not promised, a gift that you are never going to see again. You ought to praise him and give your life to him now, not just because you got Easter dinner waiting on you when you get home, not because you fresh and flyly dressed, not because everybody here watching, but because you truly believe that he's coming back again. That's the reason why we do what we do. That's the reason why we serve the way we serve. That's the reason why we worship how we worship, because we believe that the napkin is folded and he's not done yet. And that's your sermon. Ha! Y'all didn't know I could preach that quick, did you? If you're here this morning and you're not a disciple, don't secretly follow from afar. Don't, 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 don't wait. Don't wait until grandmama in the casket. Amen, Tyson. Don't wait for you to have one foot in the grave and another on a banana peel. Talking about now I want to come to the Lord. You need to make up in your mind right now because God has been too good and he's offering remission of sin and he wants you to take him up on the offer. You do it by believing. That's what faith is. Faith is important because without it, it's impossible to please him. Be willing to repent. Repentance is just changing your mind. We all change our mind. Don't you need to change your mind about some stuff? You try doing it your way. It's time to try it God's way. Will you give it to him? Confess with your mouth that he's the Christ, the son of the living God. We bury you in water for the remission of your sin. And I want you to watch this. All of the people sitting in here are serving and living because we're waiting on the return. And we're trying to get as many people as we can also to be ready for his return. If you haven't been to Crenshaw in a while, we want you to know our deacons pray over you. If you'd like to have prayer for you, your family, situation in your life. There's no power in these brothers. There's no power in any of us. The power's in God. And we take your problem and we put it in the capable hands of the living God who has never made a mistake. We pray with you. We pray for you. If you need to fill out a card, we'll read your request. If you've uh, emailed one, thank you for that. But will you come with me? Can we stand to our feet as together we stand and sing the song of invitation? I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, away. I give.
give myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am, here I stand, Lord, my faith in your hand, Lord. Oh, me. 
Good morning, church. Tyson, thank you so much for that message. And, and Dwayne, certainly thank you and your, um, your team. You know, I remember somebody preached that sometimes you just need a song to remind you just how good God is. And so um, when Dwayne and, and certainly our song leaders sing some of these songs, uh, I don't know about for you, but for me, they do take me to a place. And I'm just so thankful and grateful that um, no matter where I am, the song that comes to my mind that just reminds me of him, I am just uh, allows me just to be that much more thankful for him and just to praise him because he's brought us an awful long way. You know, when you think about the history of this country and for us as a people, uh, we can't help but even just with that history alone, we can't help but be thankful, thankful to God and just imagine how he's blessed each and every single one of us individually and just how much he's blessed our children and our prayer uh, for you is that you and that all of us never forgets just how good God is. Um, we've got several that have um, made prayer requests. Just want to go over those that have submitted requests online. And our brother Dempster will be um, uh, doing the ones in-house. I'm so glad that my brother is standing behind, beside me this week. And um, um, just continue, again, continue to, to please keep him uh, in prayer. Uh, Kenneth Klein requests prayers for safe uh, travels. Uh, Sharon Smith requesting prayers for Brother Lewis Moore, uh, especially concerning his health. Uh, Janice Brown is, is giving thanks and also has a prayer request. Uh, she requests prayer for her friend, Leslie Belton's mom. Uh, Leslie's mom's name is Yvonne Johnson, and um, Ms. Johnson is having some health issues, so Janice is asking prayers on our behalf. Janice is thankful uh, for God's grace and mercy. Her surgery was successful and her recovery is going speedily. As a matter of fact, Janice is here this morning. So we're thankful and grateful that she's here. And um, she's thankful for her niece, uh, Beverly Jenkins' is recovery as well. Uh, Beverly is home and rehabilitating. And Janice just prays to uh, ask for prayer for continued healing for all of them. Uh, Pence is requesting prayers for uh, 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 Dorian Jones's health. And Lord Latoris Johnson requesting prayers to save travels home later this week. Shawnee Logan is requesting prayers uh, for traveling grace uh, for herself, uh, Kayla, and her parents. Lloyd and Pamela West are requesting prayers for uh, Pamela's uh, knee replacement surgery on April 4th. And Dana Cadell requesting prayers that God sends a doctor who can uh, remove a watermelon sized tumor. So we certainly want to continue to keep uh, Dana in prayer. I'll just turn it over to Dempster at this time. Good morning, church. Um, Eternal Father in heaven, we thank you. Tyson, we thank you for that message this morning. Uh, what a powerful message there was. Um, we just ask that, you know, as we read the names of those that have responded to the message, we pray that you will um, remember those names, call them out, lift them up, uh, encourage them, give them a hug. Um, let's continue to encourage one another as we go to our Lord and Savior in a word of prayer. Sister Essie Thomas this morning is asking for prayers. She said, good morning, saints. Please pray for me as I am relocating to Detroit, Michigan in three weeks. Um, please pray that the whole process is smooth and she's giving thanks to the church. Sister Essie Thomas is to my left there. Um, we just want to um, wish her well on her transition to Detroit, Michigan. Victoria is asking for prayers. Please pray for my friend's mother. Uh, she's in hospice battling cancer. Uh, her name is Mabel, so we'll be lifting up Mabel this morning in the family. Uh, Mimi, I want to say Mon Mimi Montier Mon Montria, Montria. Uh, please, uh, she's asking for prayers, prayer uh, requests for my marriage, uh, my return back to the Lord, my return back to the Lord God, and my return every Sunday for service at Crenshaw. 
also asking for a better relationship with God and him and forgiveness for being lost. Welcome back, our sister, to the Lord. Um, Corinne Spencer, uh, please pray um, for my, my cousin Patricia uh, Amstory. Uh, she, is, she has breast cancer. So we'll be lifting up Patricia this morning. Regina Brown asking the church for prayers for a dear friend, uh, Demetrius Lynch, who is battling cancer. Uh, prayers that God will clear and heal his pain. Uh, Maraca Jackson, my wife, is asking for prayers uh, to keep Wayne Ballard and his family in prayers. Uh, he has stage four liver and a pancreatic cancer. She's also asking for prayers for our younger daughter, Mania. Uh, Mania uh, hurt her knee last week. We're just asking for a speedy recovery uh, for her. Sister Howard has a praise report. Uh, Sister Howard would like to give a praise report for her grandson, Amir Gross. Her beloved grandson, who she affectionately calls Champ, uh, plays first in the, the Crenshaw Robotics competition. Uh, Champ also competes in Lego. Champ also competes in Lego building and excels uh, in uh, coding. So um, she's very proud of her grandson this morning. She's giving thanks to the glory of God for his uh, achievement. At this time, we're going to ask Brother Joe Jackson, if you will, lead us in a word of prayer. Good morning. So I'm just going to prepare you now. I'm going to ask you to either hold somebody's hand or, or, or touch somebody near you. But I want to say something for those of us that are praying. Um, this past week, I was at a retreat for my job. And one of my friends said, she, she said to me, Joe, didn't you used to preach? And I go, yeah. And I, I go, but, you know, I started feeling like I'm not good enough to do the job. And that kind of sat, you know, you say things and then they kind of sit on your head a little bit. And then I thought back to my childhood, how I used to look at the older Christians. I said, man, one day I'm going to be a good Christian. It took me going to a Christian school and dealing with people who didn't know who God was that I found out that God loved me just as I was. But it took me to like, I'm like 30 something when I figured that out. And then this, this week and weeks past, I pray to be a, a better husband. I got a good wife. Don't, don't start nothing. I got a good wife. <laughs> I got good, my, my children, these grades may be because of them, but I love my kids. And I pray, God, make me a better father, make me a better husband. And this morning I was, I, I couldn't sleep and I said, God, I'm going to stop asking you to make me better because it's like I'm saying what you've given, what you've done isn't good enough. So my prayer is that God work with this mess, me. Work with what I got, because if I keep, how can I keep asking for more? Maybe I'm just not doing enough what God already has. So if you're in this spot, I'm, just, I'm saying I hope it helped you. And if it don't help you, then pray for me, because you're going to need the prayer eventually anyway. But maybe what you are right now is enough. So we're going to pray. And if any of y'all, I got Terry on one side. Terry still got the muscles. Don't mess with me. And I got my brother Dempsey on the other. So I ask you to, to reach out, put, put your hand on somebody. Terry, be gentle with me. <laughs> and we're going to pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father, as we bow today, we realize that the world calls this Resurrection Day. We think about your son all the time, but we're thankful that the world has stopped for just a minute to say thank you and to say that he is risen and we know that he is risen indeed. Father God, I'm gathered here with men and women who love you. Some of them are searching for you. Some of them don't know who you are just yet. Would you please reveal yourself to them? Father, for every prayer request that's been sent up today, 
We ask your hand a blessing upon every situation, everyone who's struggling, everyone who may feel like they're not enough, everyone who is grieving, everyone who is traveling, everyone who has somebody in the hospital, somebody that may be on the very edge and end of their life. We pray your hand a blessing. Dear Lord, be with us as we go throughout this upcoming week. Bless the students who have been off on break and will be and bless those who are preparing to go on break. Father, bless the teachers who have had a minute off and for some that will be going back and then others will be starting their breaks. We ask your hand a blessing on them. For all the men and women who serve in law enforcement and emergency workers, we ask your hand a blessing on them. Father, for everyone, every mother, every father, every brother, every sister, every son, every daughter in this building, we pass your hand of blessing upon them. And for everyone who has sent in a request, we pray that it just go up to you and that you heal and that you love on us and help us to love on one another. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has, he has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has, he has smiled on me. God has truly been good to us, church. At this time, we, gotta, we have an opportunity to give back a portion of what God has blessed us with. If you're watching online and would like to give, simply text your offering to the number that's on the screen. You can use our church app, or you can mail it to 2719 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, 9008 Los Angeles, California. And you, if you're in the house and would like to give, simply raise your gift, and one of the ushers will come by to pick it up. I don't know if most of you are like me, I get paid once a month, and this was one of those five weeks, 31 days. But as I reflect on this, as I reflect on this long month, God has blessed me throughout, and I went without need. Amen. So let us think about Jesus and what he said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us pray for the offering. Our Father and our God, once again, we say thank you. Thank you for the blessings you continue to bestow on us. Thank you for our sources of income. Father, we just pray that the things are collected are to help spread your word. It's in Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is your name. shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we, as it were, hid our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sins of many and made the intercession for the transgressors. By his stripes, we are healed. Let us thank God for Jesus Christ. Pray with me as I pray for the bread and the cup. Our Father and our God, once again, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus did on Calvary's cross. As we take this bread, we do it with thanksgiving in our heart. And as we drink this cup, we remember the blood that was spilled on our behalf. It's in Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen. Please fill back the first layer and partake of the bread. Please fill back the second layer and partake of the cup. Has everyone been served? Once again, we would like to thank everyone for coming out this morning. To our visitors, you are honored guests. Thank you for coming by. We ask that you please remain seated for some quick announcements before we uh, wish you Godspeed. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, once again, we say thank you. Father, thank you for allowing us to come to this building and give you the praise and worship you so richly deserve. But Father, our prayer is that it doesn't stop here. We can go out into this world and let our light shine, and we can be the children you have called us to be. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen. Good morning to everyone. We just have a few brief announcements before we dismiss ourselves. We want to thank all of you who are visiting with us uh, this morning. I do have a few cards, but I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to ask those who have brought visitors to introduce their visitors. So I'm going to start with Brother Bailey. Brother Bailey, do you have a young lady visiting with you this morning? Thank you so much, Ms. Beverly, for coming. God bless you. We appreciate having you. Let's see, is Julius and Olivia Murphy in the house? They brought a visitor. All right. Okay. Okay. Y Hold on. Y'all, look at this. Whole family, whole row of people. All right. Can we get everyone's name? All right. Thank you, Terry, for coming. Appreciate that. Let's see here. And Latoya and Melvin Sanders have visitors. Hold on. Your daughter's like, hold up. You ain't introducing me like I'm no visitor. I'm, oh, I'm messing with you. Thank you so much for coming. The Harrises, thank you. Do we have anyone else that's visiting? Would you mind standing, just showing us who you are? I do have one more card, a Titus Dock. Is it from Nashville? Thank you so much for coming all the way from Nashville. Welcome to California. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. We've got another 
Tennessee in the house, Memphis and Nashville. Now, y'all probably not going to recognize this young man, but I'm going to have him introduce himself. Last time y'all saw him, he was about this tall with long hair, <laughs> twisted up like Samson, made in a ponytail. Now he's a grown man. Y'all see this? Thank you so much, all three of y'all, for coming. And, and I just want to say I'm just proud to see young men of God in the house wanting to worship. Can we say thank you to all the young men who have come this morning? God bless you. Well, we want you to know your honored guests. Please check out our church app. There's QR codes. All you got to do is take a picture of it. Download our app. You can get all the announcements. All the services are recorded. Uh, all the announcements are there. You can give through the app. You can get everything through the app, so we really would like for you to check out the app uh, and be able uh, to stay up. I'm, I'm just going, I know Sister Curl is proud because Michael and Gina's in the house. And who is this grown woman sitting between y'all? Huh? Nuh-uh, nuh-uh, oh wow. Y'all know Michael is Billy and Mary's youngest son. And this is family. Good to see y'all in the house this morning. For all the rest of you who are visiting, thank you so much. It's good to see all y'all too. Amen. Let's see here. We have just a few brief announcements. Now, David left the room. Here's Dave. Now, I got y'all out of church early this morning. Okay, so David is going to tell you what time Bible class starts. Because I was going to ask you what time Bible class starts. We're going to start Bible class at 11 instead of 11.30. All right. All right. But I'll let him make that. Did I make it? Did I? You want me to make it? Right. The sisters class is not meeting today, but the main class taught by Aaron Brumfield is going to start at 11 a.m. That's in 16 minutes. All the kids classes will also meet again 11 a.m. Uh, the men's encouragement event is going to happen on April the 13th at 9 a.m. You teachers, we're going to celebrate you all this Saturday uh, here at the building from 12 to 2. So we'd love to see you. Uh, we also have a couple of announcements that are community oriented. The African-American Leaders of Tomorrow program is uh, accepting application for rising high school students, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Uh, the AALT is a valuable summer conference organized by the California Legislative Black Caucus, Caucus and will be hosted at Cal State Dominguez July 17th through the 20th. Uh, if you go um, to our app, I believe it's on there, but you should be able to download or click on the application and be able to register for it if you'd like to do so. Uh, let's see here. We have job opportunities. The FAA will be hiring air traffic controllers April 19th through the 22nd. You need to be between the ages of 18 and 30, and the salary range is 103000 to 164000 with paid training and school. Amen on that. Uh, you know, if you don't have a job, then your job is looking for a job. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, the Mother's Day high tea event is going to happen Saturday, May the 11th at 1030 a.m. And they're having the best hat contest. Uh-oh. Now, in years past, the title holder was Sister Donna Davis. I think she would have won the best hat for like 48 years in a row. But Sister, Sister Davis has gone on to glory. So now I'm looking out. I see Sister Curl got a bad piece on this morning. Lois Anderson normally wear a bad piece. So we're going to have a good little contest. Now it's back open for any of the rest of y'all sisters who want to vie for the title. But we need to call it the Sister Davis best hat. Amen. Program. All right. But that's uh, Saturday, May 11th. Signups will be available next week. We want all mothers. Now, listen, uh, it's got to be first come, first serve. So please, if you're interested in going, please sign up next week. We'll have signups back in the hospitality table. If you're a mother who'd like to participate, please sign up. Do not wait till the last minute. OK, uh, brother Ellis would want me to tell you that. Uh, let's see here. Birthdays and anniversaries. It ain't my birthday, but yesterday, um, my little brother over there, Stand Up Bubs, he turned 15. Uh, he makes me feel so old because I remember holding him. It, I remember holding him in the hospital when he was two days old. It's, it's, I feel like an old man saying that he's 15. Um, man, I need an AARP card. That's right, Joe. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm very proud to be uh, your big brother. Um, you make me 
a better person. Uh, all the other people who was born in March, it's not November, but it's March. So if you want to stand, uh, I have Jamal or Uncle Ty sing to you. So all the March birthdays. Thank you and sit down. All right. As our children are coming back in looking for their parents, it's just about time to dismiss. But I, I, I want to, if y'all just allow me a minute, can, can I have Norvashua stand? Y'all know Norvashua. He is a senior at Pepperdine University. Navashua went on the mission trip to Ethiopia back in December. Navashua is doing great things for the kingdom of God, and he is going to be doing an internship, and he needs some help to do it, you all. I'm going to read what he has. He typed to me and asked, could I mention it? So I know what that means. He has been selected to participate in the Changemaker Leadership Lab through Pepperdine this upcoming May. He's going to be interning at the African Community Center in Washington, D.C. for four weeks. He will have a unique opportunity to learn how to create substantial change worldwide, working alongside local community leaders and global change makers. Y'all know what that means. We need to put some money in his pocket. He's going to need, he's going to be taking two classes to enhance his hands-on experience. And the final week of the program will be spent in the Dominican Republic, where he will observe differences between nonprofit work domestically and internationally. To support him means that you can help him with his travel, lodging, food, and transportation, uh, because this is an unpaid position. So he's not going for a job. He's going for the learning experience. So we need to help him learn. Can we do that? Novashua has a cash app. You can see him. He takes cash. You can see that too, uh, but his cash app is Vash, V-A-S-H-02, uh, and his name is Navashua Cottingham. Uh, he also has a phone number here if you like. I made him stand up because I want y'all to know who I was talking about. Just the way he's saying 147 make you want to give him a couple dollars. Amen. Can we stand together and be dismissed with a verse of song? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Everyone, again, um, regarding our teacher celebration next week, um, if you signed up with us, we'll, we'll see you then. And, and we certainly just want to um, encourage our teachers, thank them for their service, and, and, and encourage others as well um, to certainly join us in that ministry. Thank you. I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, one more thing. Uh, we, we're still collecting uh, coins for Ethiopia. Uh, the the uh, buckets are still in the back. So if you would like to continue to give to that effort, we appreciate it. And if you have given before, you can go ahead and give again. It's not a sin to do it twice. So um, thank you so much. The buckets are in the back. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime. Jesus, my Lord, my Jesus. Jesus, when the sun goes down.